time. Mr. Paulson, welcome. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to testify before the committee tonight on the, the Paulson 43 Amendment, along with uh, Mr. Dent and Mr. Gerlach and Mr. Lance. And I serve as co-chair of the House Medical Technology Caucus, and I really made becoming an active member of this caucus a top priority because I know how important medical technology is to my district, to my state, to the country, and it really is an American success story. It truly is. And this bill does contain that $20 billion tax on American medical manufacturers. The tax will hit manufacturers of technologies that are now common in modern medicine, such as the pacemakers, stents, MRI scanners, uh, will now be levied against medical device manufacturers across the country and in my home state of Minnesota. And along with the negative impact on jobs, as was just mentioned, a medical innovation tax will stifle innovation and reduce the number of life-saving technologies that many of these device manufacturers are working so hard to develop these days. And patients are going to end up paying more for fewer medical technologies over time. And I think that's really the exact opposite of what we need. Finally, as is the case with nearly any tax that gets put on private industry, the increased costs actually ultimately get borne by those consumers that rely on it. And this tax will make health care more expensive for a good segment of the population that ends up depending on these types of devices, including potentially wheelchairs. So that's why I, along with Mr. Dent and Gerlach and Lance, are offering this amendment only to change the tax so it removes the tax and instead replaces it with unobligated stimulus with funds. Uh, in the stimulus data, the administration itself often talks about jobs being saved, and our amendment would have a great impact, certainly, on the number of jobs that would be saved by preventing this tax to be levied. Nationally, about 350,000 jobs are a part of the medical technology. Uh, in Minnesota, it's close to 20,000 jobs. Uh, in fact, statistics show that every medical technology job has been shown to generate an additional two jobs by creating the need for secondary positions, such as technicians. And additionally, each medical technology payroll dollar generates an additional dollar and 12 cents in payroll to account for the increased number of positions and skills required to fill those jobs. And it's not just the larger companies that I think we all are familiar with in those names, but almost every week, every other week for sure, I tour in my district these smaller companies that are fighting to create that next life-saving technology. And I want to make sure they've got the research and development tools to help modern medicine and not send these jobs overseas. So these medical technology companies uh, will improve the quality of life as they do right now and save lives for, for consumers. It fosters that innovative spirit, I think, that is so important that has kept Minnesota and America at the forefront of medical innovation for decades. And I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to testify and ask for your consideration as a part of the rule. To well, is, there, 